so we're here to talk about uh, Dion Aegis. Um, wouldn't be an interview without my leather jacket, feeling like Dion. Might have to even whack on a little beanie for him too, eh? Really get in, how's that? Does that look good? Little mm -hmm. Dion Aegis beanie and then put on a little necklace I made last night too. I'm ready to rock and roll. Now I feel like the part. <laughs> I mean, Dion can make fun of himself all day. He knows how to do that too, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, you know, he. I mean, right now he he wears a beanie, you know. Like I think that's the funniest thing that he wears a beanie, you know. And look, like I'm see, I'm wearing a V-neck. Dion was wearing these things like 20 years ago. It kind of makes you feel not cool <laughs> because like every surf he had a new band shirt on, and that he was like doing these little airs with a rancid shirt on and shit and. Misfit shirt, and I was just like, yeah, it's so cool. Like, I've got my vest on, my black vest. <laughs> it's pretty funny, too, to watch him come from like <laughs> this kid who's like the full style icon, too. He's just <laughs> every time, one time I seen him in Bondi, I was just like, hadn't seen him in a while. I'm like looking across the road, and I just see this kid with like a nighty on, just this nighty with these leopard pants and these fucking purple Doc Martens and I'm just thinking who's this kid and it was Dion mate it was hilarious I think he'd probably be a little bit um, misunderstood like if you didn't know him you could have a different perception of him until you actually meet him and realize that yeah he's a good bloke but he was doing something different and because he was the first person kind of putting himself out in that way there's a million people out there who feel shitty about themselves that are dying to like take someone else down you know he's not gonna back down from his opinions and stuff so he's just he's like an interesting character i guess but no it's sick that people make fun of him because that means he's there he has a mark and people care about what he does and what he thinks you know he makes you pretty envious sometimes because he's um he's kind of a step ahead he was being himself and there was always a lifestyle component as soon as you start to deviate from the very, very simple, safe thing of doing the action, like surfing or skating or whatever it is, you open yourself up to criticism. You can't all the time be getting like the craziest stuff and showing it and getting everybody amped on just surfing. You go anywhere else in the world and the interesting people you meet have an opinion, you know? I'd rather meet someone and talk to someone who has an opinion than someone who sits back and doesn't say a word, you know? Like, I think in a way it's like earned him more respect than it has hatred. Yeah, I don't think Dion still to this day isn't really accepted, but he doesn't give a shit, so he just keeps doing it. He's doing what he loves and... Dion was the first person I saw doing consistently good stuff on the internet. I mean, every few weeks he had something new up and it was just really exciting and he had a really good crew that were with him that were, they seemed really open to ideas and, and kind of like-minded, so. With Dion and that sort of generation, they all just are rad dudes that get along and are friends and they push each other. So if like Dion or Chipper or Craig does something rad, it's like they all are clapping. Like I, that's, there's hardly any kids that I know that clap. Usually you get stink eyes and do something rad on the surfboard. It's like skateboarding. Like when somebody does something rad at a spot, everyone is clapping and they're high fiving, and like that's how hanging out with these guys is, and it's that's really fucking cool. Everyone's sort of come together, and there's that you know that little group that always seems to we always seem to find ourselves you know doing a bunch of trips or hanging out, and that modern collective trip. Um, Dion was meant to go on that trip. He hurt his ankle at the time, and somehow I, I got the call up. So. I couldn't really see myself fitting with any other group. Like, it's a good little team. Everyone's, you know, stuck together and sort of try to push it. He has a lot of cool stuff going on and he comes up with some really great ideas. I hope he follows through some of the things that he's trying to do because he could end up doing some really rad shit, especially in surfing. He's an amazing idea man. And if you put one to three coffees in his body, they're, they're, whatever makes someone say, don't say that idea, is gone. Because they just, <laughs> and they don't stop and they're just they're, if he has anything that enters in his brain and there's coffees in his system as well all that just <laughs> it just keeps coming out it's just one time he told me this story in France and he went through about four different ideas but he was trying to tell me about this traction company idea that he wanted to do and he went through like four different things and he ended up talking about a Russian man named Boris who wasn't making bags for him I think he's you know creatively like conscious and you know he always he knows what he's 
what he wants to see and what he wants to do and he's just good at communicating and stuff too so he's always good to have around and it's like a really incredible little symbiotic relationship because when you work with Dion you have a you have this perfect little special agent you know where it's like he's just living this fake life as a surfer but he's really like a filmmaker you know and he's just dying to, to be a part of it and to do it and to make it good and if he's a part of your project you got a guy who's going to work for free and make sure that it's better or it's as good as it can be as far as he's concerned you know i mean definitely he loves working with his friends you know and who doesn't want to do that and uh art photography like he sees all these things so i imagine he's looking at it through his eyes his you know and he probably sees things a lot different than than other people see it you know which is which is a gift that he has. So I think that is a catalyst that makes him feel like he needs to, to go do all these projects. Dion's was the first stuff that you could see he got together and, and had concepts and stuff like that. And I think a lot of people owe their careers to Dion in a way. And then there's kids that came up and watched Dion and were like, fuck, I want to do what he's doing. And so, you know, he's really opened up that free surfing genre to people that you know they can go do that as a lifestyle as a living it's amazing like one point it was just wqs you know if you weren't on the qs qualifying you weren't the next mick fanning you know you weren't nothing he's not the guy that just goes oh sick okay yeah, i got a paycheck i'll just hang out at home you know like he does the research and he spends all this money to make it happen himself you know he's not waiting for a photographer he's not waiting to go on the strip he's like dude i got the ticket are you coming with me you know kind of deal seems like these days every Everybody's got their name.com and like it or not, he's a trendsetter, he started that shit. And he did. He started off well too, he set the bar high. So I do know that he'll probably always be doing something different, if that makes sense. I mean in 20 years you'd say, oh yeah, he's doing this, but like in 21 years he'll be doing something different. Be like trying to ask a gypsy where they're going to live for the rest of their life. They kind of just keep moving and what, what's he currently doing? What's Dion, what are you currently doing right now, bro? I'm talking about this documentary that you're doing. Cause they got this what you thing. Was it like an on a mission thing where like eight of the best surfers got together for a traction company and then got hosed? Like, what's, what's, what are you guys doing over there? 